Hello, geometry students. In this lesson, uh, lesson eight, we are going to be taking a look at some formulas in geometry. Now, this lesson is going to introduce several specific formulas, but remember, this lesson is more about, in general, how to use formulas in geometry. So the way that this is going to work is there's going to be some formulas you're just expected to know. Uh, you'll be expected to know the perimeter of a rectangle or uh, a triangle, or you'll be able to be expected to figure out what the perimeter is of a different shape because you know the definition of perimeter. Uh, you're going to need to know formulas for the area of a rectangle and the area of a triangle. There's also going to be a lot of formulas, though, that you're just given. Okay, so you need to be able to work with formulas either that you are memorizing in this lesson or ones that you're given to work with in the future. And there are a whole lot of different formulas in geometry. Now, another thing I want to point out is this is not a lesson that relates to what Euclid did with geometry. Because remember, Euclid was all about proving things with just a straight edge and a compass. Uh, he would not have measured things. But this lesson is entirely based on measurement. Because in order to find uh, different calculations uh, related to geometry, uh, you need to have measured values that you plug in. The variables relate to measured and calculated values. Uh, so for example, when we find the area of a rectangle, area equals length times width, we have to measure the length and the width to calculate the area. Euclid wouldn't have done that because he wouldn't have cared about measurement in his geometry. But this is an important part of modern geometry, so let's dive in. First thing we're going to do is define what a formula is. A formula is a mathematical relationship expressed with symbols. Okay, that's the way that Saxon defines it. I added the little bit at the end. It's usually an equation. What is an equation? Well, you hear that word equal, equal, equals in the word equation. An equation is an expression that has an equal sign in it. So actually, another way to think about it is it's uh, two expressions that are equated to each other with an equal sign. Okay, so uh, we can solve an equation for a value, and that's what we're going to be doing here. Uh, one particular formula that's very common in geometry is formulas for the perimeters of objects. And the definition of perimeter is the sum of the lengths of a closed geometric figure. Now that's the fancy definition. Let's just talk about that for a second. A closed geometric figure means that all of the sides come together at angles and uh, there's no gaps in the sides of the figure. And then we talk about the sum of the side lengths. Okay, you can picture what that is. Another definition, like maybe a, a less formal definition, would be the distance around uh, a figure. So if you think about it, the distance around the outside of a triangle. If you follow each side length exactly, it would be the perimeter of the triangle. I have two perimeter formulas that you're going to be expected to just know anytime these come up. And honestly, perimeter is easy enough to work with. If you have a shape that you're given most of the side lengths and you can figure out the few remaining unknown side lengths, you're going to be expected to find all of the side lengths of irregular shapes and add them together. That's one of the things that you're going to be expected to do with perimeter in this class. But anyway, we're going to start off with easy. And we're going to have some very regular, um, maybe not regular in the definition, in the sense of what regular means. We'll talk about what that word regular means in geometry. But we'll have some easy to navigate shapes. The first one is a rectangle. A rectangle is not a regular shape. We'll talk about that word in a second. But it is an easy shape to work with. The perimeter is just two times the length plus two times the width. Hey, why is the perimeter formula that? Well, remember, it's the sum of the side lengths, and a rectangle has two opposite sides that are the same length, and two other, another set of opposite sides. And we, maybe we'll call that width instead of length. So those are the same width. So it's just two times whatever the length is plus two times whatever the width is. That's how we would add the four sides around the outside of a rectangle. I could also calculate the perimeter of a regular triangle with a formula. That perimeter is simply going to be three times the side length. Now, can you, did, 
Can you figure out from this equation what a regular means? A regular figure in geometry has all the same side lengths. Okay, so this would be an equilateral triangle. It would be another fancy word for this particular triangle. Um, but we, we would also call it a regular triangle. All of the side lengths are the same. Well, how do we find the perimeter of a triangle if all the side lengths are the same? We just need one side and we multiply it by three because we're just counting up all three sides. All right, and that brings us to our next type of known formula for geometry, the ones that you're expected to memorize. That would be a formula for area. In this case, we're going to learn the area of a rectangle and the area of a triangle. What is area, though? Area is the region that's bounded by the sides of a closed figure. So how much area is there inside a figure? What is the size of the region? Uh, and there are formulas for that that are really simple for rectangles and for triangles. For a rectangle, the area is simply the length times the width. So for the perimeter, we had to add up the outsides of the figure, the two, two times the length plus two times the width. For area, we just multiply them together, and that tells us how much region is bounded by those two sides. Uh, for a triangle, the formula is just a little bit more complicated, okay? So a triangle's area can always be calculated by finding the base, measuring the base width and the height of the triangle. Uh, another word for height for a triangle is the altitude of the triangle. Okay, so we choose the side of the triangle to be the base, and then the altitude forms a perpendicular line with the base and it reaches from the base to the highest point on the triangle from whatever side we determine to be the base. And that's how you measure the height or the altitude of a triangle. We're going to actually do that because some triangles, it's a little harder to figure out what the height is, especially an obtuse triangle. Uh, but we'll, we'll practice that a bit uh, before we get into those types of problems. And then you have to remember with a triangle to always multiply by one half. That's the most common mistake I see geometry students make, finding the area of a triangle. They forget that last step to multiply by one half. Uh, so maybe it, it's a triangle that's harder to figure out the altitude. You get all excited about figuring the altitude. You multiply the base times the altitude or the height, uh, and then you think you're done. But you need to make sure you factor in that one half. We have one more equation or formula that's related to uh, triangles. And this is a specific one that's related to a specific type of triangle. That's the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so the Pythagorean theorem is uh, this statement. The sum of the lengths of the square... <laughs> Oops, hold on a second. I see there's an extra word in here. The sum of the square of the lengths of the legs, A and B. So A squared and B squared is the sum of the... A squared plus B squared would be the sum of the square of the lengths of a right triangle. I'm just going to highlight this word here. We're talking about right triangles only when we're dealing with the Pythagorean theorem. So this will not work for regular triangles like we had above unless you split them into two right triangles. Right triangles only for the Pythagorean theorem. The sum of the square of the lengths of the legs A and B of a right triangle is equal to the square of the length of the hypotenuse C. And is written, and this is the important thing to remember with the Pythagorean theorem, it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, now some things you need to remember about the Pythagorean theorem. a and b are always the sides, not the hypotenuse. So th that's significant because if you mix it up and put a or b on the other side of the Pythagorean theorem where c belongs, the answer will not be correct. You need to make sure that the two legs are always on the left-hand side. Uh, are always the... Actually, I don't know why it says sides. There's another mistake. It should be legs. Always the legs or the segments that form the right angle. Hey, let's just take a look at an example of a uh, right triangle here. Uh, notice that A and B form a right angle with each other. Therefore, we would refer to them as the legs, and these are the two side lengths that would go on this side of the equation here. And then C is always the hypotenuse, or the longest side, the side that doesn't form a right angle with another side 
I'll notice that this is an acute angle and this is an acute angle. And that's always going to be true of a right triangle. The hypotenuse is going to form acute angles with the other two sides. It's also the longest side. Um, and that side has to go on the side by itself in the Pythagorean theorem formula. So there's a few little tricks you need to remember when using the Pythagorean theorem formula. We're going to get some practice with this in the lesson practice in the next video.